Okay, let's try this again. I had a jet flying over um, the workshop here, a lot of noise. Anyway, what I'm contemplating doing here is uh, to cut this veneer in a diamond pattern. And the reason why, that, again, the grain on this veneer, and it's very, very hard to see in here, this grain doesn't have a lot of, uh, or this particular veneer doesn't have a lot of definition, uh, just at a glance. but the uh, grain lines are running uh, left to right or right to left and you know you don't want to have a cut like this because you can see if I were to try to match this now how difficult that would be but you know it is a real small area I'm not sure how much the eyes will be drawn to that but uh, just for giggles I think I'm gonna lay a piece of veneer across here and I'm gonna go ahead and do this diamond cut in uh, this area lift this veneer up and then just lay a piece in there and wrap it around I'm not going to glue it or anything at this point in time I just want to see what it looks like so uh, hang tight just for a minute let me uh, get a straight edge here make some measurements and uh, then cut this piece out lift it off and then uh, we'll take another look Okay guys, I made the uh, cut here, the diagonal cut that I was referencing off camera. Sorry, I had to get my head down here a little bit closer and chiseled all that out. But uh, here's a piece of veneer. Again, it's just a paperback uh, veneer. And I've cut it to kind of fill the void now. And again, it's not going to lay exactly right because I need to fill in some of that area as well. And then I need to lower some of this area by doing some additional sanding on my new corner piece. But I just wanted to do this for illustration purposes just to show you, you know, what it would look like. And again, some of the, you know, the lines you see there on the 45 degree angles roughly, um, I'll be able to fill those in with uh, grain filler. And as well using some toning markers and tie in the old piece to the new piece, I believe. Uh, that or even my wax sticks, which I've used in the past with success. So, uh... Let me play around with a uh, piece. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to wrap uh, one of these pieces around and uh, make it permanent. And let's see, uh, see what it looks like. Okay, here's a look at the uh, other diagonal cut again that I've made on this side. And as you can see, some of the substrate material underneath the veneer it was like probably some uh, 1 32nd or 1 16th inch birch plywood underneath the veneer was already missing in this area so I'm actually going to take a piece of uh, birch plywood and uh, build this back up right here probably hard to see at this angle and uh, tie it back into here and uh, let that dry just for a bit but you can see here where I've made my uh, diamond point cut and uh, clean this area out uh, flush uh, best I can and that's where my uh, veneer will go in now again this piece of veneer is not made to go here but just for a visual representation again I'll cut a piece and uh, let it lay down in there like that now here's the uh, look at the other side. Again, I made another uh, diamond cut. It's uh, again close to uh, you know a 45 degree angle, and I've cleaned out this area. And again, I, I need to uh, build up the substrate in this area. And I was thinking of uh, using some birch plywood, but uh, I may actually use some wood filler. I'll have better control over that since. Uh, you know, I'm kind of ramping back up here to where my new uh, corner pieces attach. So um, let me get out the uh, the wood filler and start uh, filling in some of these gaps here and create a nice plane for the uh, new veneer to uh, adhere to. Okay, guys, I've got the uh, what I've decided to do: the uh, substrate with all the imperfections high points, low points, the best solution for me was just to use some wood filler. And uh, I really like this water-based uh, filler. You can actually use it as a grain filler if you choose to do so. Um, I've never done that, but uh, you know, it works great. It dries quick and it's easy to work with. So let me just pull this back out where you can take a look at this. 
Again, I'm just experimenting right now with this one um, piece of veneer and just want to see how it works out. So I've got the, uh, the wood filler in this area to build the substrate up just a little bit above my new corner piece. And then I'll sand it back off to make sure it's nice and flush. And then the same thing for uh, this piece as well. Um, I'll go back and sand that off. So I've got it raised up just a little bit higher than the uh, substrate itself here uh, that the veneer itself was attached to. So you can see there where it's kind of raised up, but I'll go back and again level this back off uh, with this area. And then we'll cut a piece of veneer and glue it in place and then play around with some of the uh, toning markers or wax sticks, etc. and uh, see how well we can match it before I go to the trouble of doing these other sections. So uh, I'll be back as soon as this dries. It'll probably take a few hours. It's not very thick, but I'm thinking within two or three hours I can uh, have this dry. So I'm gonna mess around here with a few other things in the shop and we'll continue here shortly. Okay, it's been a couple hours and uh, not really certain if the wood filler is uh, completely set up, but it's about 95 degrees. And I've had this by a fan as well. So my guess, it's uh, dry. But I'm gonna just kinda go over it here lightly with my uh, sanding sponge and uh, just, just make sure that the uh, this turns into a powder. I'm just getting it real, real light. And this uh, looks like it is dry. So let's go ahead and uh, just sand it up. So I've got a little bit of a high spot right there. Knock that down. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm gonna take this and uh, blow the dust off and we'll take it back over to the uh, bench area itself and uh, take a closer look at it and then uh, maybe get a scrap piece of veneer out and uh, see what it looks like. Okay guys, this is gonna be real hard to see on camera. This is what I did. So this will be my uh, template for my piece of veneer that I need to cut. And what I did was just trace out the uh, shape of the missing veneer. You can see I've got a nice fit there. And roll this around. Let me flip it over. Oops, sorry for the camera bump. And I'm not sure if it shows up on camera nicely or not, but uh, that's probably about the best fit I'm going to be able to get. And then I'll probably have a little bit of extra veneer to sand off. So let me try to cut a piece of veneer and have it match this form factor and see if we get a fit. Okay, there's that uh, paper template that I uh, created and I've actually marked that now on the uh, veneer itself. And this veneer is extremely uh, thin, 
and I'm going to take some uh, real sharp scissors. Again, I'm going to cut right on the outside of the uh, the mark. little past this and cut this off and then we'll trim this up. Okay, this should be uh, rather close. It's probably not perfect. My thumb back out of here. So let me uh, bring the uh, radio cabinet back over and see if we've got a fit. Looks good there. And just a little trimming to do here. So. Again, that's, uh, that's the look I was uh, hoping to get. And let me just move this here and I'll show you the other side. It's going to need a little bit of trim. This shows up in camera here. I need to knock off just a hair. So let me uh, work on that, try to get a better fit, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've got the uh, desired fit now that I want. I uh, may have to do just a little bit of trimming, and again, the width itself, after I apply the uh, veneer to the cabinet, I'll uh, sand it down. But uh, let me just show you what, uh, what we're looking at here. So that's the... Uh, that's the fit that we're looking at there if that shows on camera. And where the, the veneer comes together, you know, the new and old piece, again, it's a diagonal cut. It won't be that visible. And again, I'll use some, uh, some grain filler in that area as well as using uh, probably some of my wax sticks. See if I can cover that up and then I'll probably uh, use my uh, graining marker as well and then I'll need to darken this piece of veneer also but I think my next step I'm going to uh, go ahead and grab some glue and get this piece of veneer attached here uh, to this side and then we'll come back and take another look just real quick the uh, veneer glue that I want to use again this is a paperback veneer is uh, heat lock iron on veneer adhesive it's made uh, where you can get it at veneersupplies.com I've had this bottle now for uh, probably a year it does really really well and the uh, the prep on it what you do again is put a, you know a real small coat uh, uniform on the substrate material itself and the back side of the veneer and you let that dry for about 20-30 minutes and it's just not uh, tacky that's when it's ready to put on now one mistake that I made before is I didn't wait long enough and it was still uh, the, the glue was tacky and as soon as I touched the substrate to the veneer it was all over for me I mean the veneer just stuck uh, right to the uh, substrate and I had a mess on my hands so uh, just be patient if you use this type of product and uh, 
you know, wait 20, 30 minutes or just a little longer. And then I'll apply some heat and uh, we'll see what we get. So again, this is applied to the uh, substrate as well as the back side of the uh, veneer. Okay, it's been about uh, 25 minutes or so since I put the uh, heat lock on the uh, back side of the paper veneer and as well on the uh, substrate and just feeling of it, it's not tacky. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to apply this. And I do just want to make real quick and certain that I have the uh, pieces going the right direction, and I do. So I think I'm going to start on this side. Again, I'm going to apply uh, heat. The iron itself is on uh, medium to high heat. And you just want to keep the iron moving. And again, I'm probably no chance of burning the veneer because, uh, again, I've got the uh, you know, cotton cloth here between the veneer itself. And I'm already starting to get uh, some adhesion, which is perfect. It's laying down in there. So, um, wrap this around. I'm going to go ahead and get this side here, then we'll get the... Let me just pull the slack toward me. This is going to be real hard to do on uh, camera, folks. Sorry. But, um, I'll do my best. You know, I'm kind of going blind at this anyway. So, what I'll do is go back over this really, really good. And just try to get uh, some adhesion here. And uh, force it down. I know you guys can't see that, but be patient and I'll flip it over here in just a second. Well, yeah, it looks like it's just a little on the high side. hope that doesn't uh, create a problem and I sand through the veneer. Put a little bit more pressure there and see if I can press it down in there. So I'm going to flip it around real quick. I've still got some time here to work with the adhesion, but let me just show you what we've got so far. So there's the uh, the veneer. It's ironed on. Again, I don't have adhesion right in here. I can fear, fill an air bubble. So uh, I'm going to flip this around, work it off the camera. But that's what we're looking at right now. Like I said, that is raised just a little bit, so I'm going to see if I can get that down in there just a little bit more. Because the uh, paperback veneer, for those that's worked with it, you know, is so super thin, you can sand right through it in just a matter of seconds. And, you know, if I do, I'll create some fake uh, grain lines with my uh, graining markers. I've done that before. Uh, but again, all this is kind of trial and error. I'm not even sure this will be my uh, solution to these other sections or not. I may just wrap the whole uh, radio to get the desired results. So uh, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Like I said, I left the uh, veneer uh, just a little bit uh, wide. And uh, what I'm going to do here is take some uh, 80 grit sandpaper, and I've already been doing this, but all, all I've been doing is just kind of knocking down this edge. Um, I left it maybe a 32nd of an inch um, high, and I'm just going around with some uh, 80 grit sandpaper and just knocking down the uh, high spots.
That feels good. Now to get this other side, I'll just flip it over and do the same. Again, that paper veneer is so uh, thin. You know, you can cut right through it and it cuts like butter. It has some advantages on use, but it also is problematic, again, for sanding through. So, uh, again, I'm just using my finger. So it's just a little high right in that area still. It feels good, and then the top side feels good. All right, let me flip this back over. And let me get my, uh, kind of my worn out uh, sanding sponge, uh, medium grit, but again, it's kind of wore down. And let's go over this piece here just a little bit. So here's where you have to be extremely careful. Again, this is just a little bit high here and you know, it's higher than I want. So I didn't get it to set down in there. I may have had that piece cut, um, you know, a thousandths or so too long, but uh, I'm gonna hit it here real light again with the sanding sponge. And I think I'm gonna pull it this way just in case I have that piece try to lift out. Oh yeah, that's, uh, I kind of knocked that uh, edge off right there. The, uh, continue to hit it here real light. Again, you only have a few thousandths of an inch of uh, wood veneer to play around with. So I'm going to be extremely cautious because you'll go right through the uh, veneer. So um, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. And then this side, let me do the same for it. Again, I'm going to pull it back toward me so I'm not sanding toward the uh, diamond shape. Uh, just in case it lifts and I break that piece of veneer. Oh yeah, feels great there. So I think I'll stop there for now. Let me take it back over to the uh, bench here where I've got some better light and uh, we'll take a look at it together. Okay, a uh, little veneer matching here. Uh, probably one of my best jobs ever. Very, very pleased. So you can see here how the, uh, the new veneer ties into the old. And you know, one last step. Uh, still just maybe a smidget high right in this area and um, You know, I may just leave it because I'm afraid I'll burn through the uh, the paper But I've got the uh, the sides here nice and smooth So where I left the piece of veneer just a touch wide. I've knocked that off. I hit it with the uh, sanding sponge as well uh, This is a beautiful match in this area uh, where this comes together Let's see if I can get this up here where you can see it And I'm pleased with this as well. Like I said, it feels just a little high right there on the point. So I may try to knock that down uh, just a touch. So the next thing I'm going to do is take some uh, stain on some scrap veneer. And I'll probably use gel because I love using it. You can just wipe it on, wipe it off. And that's probably what I'll do. And see if I can uh, take this veneer and make it closer match this veneer and uh, that's very important before applying uh, toner lacquers 
So uh, stay with me. Uh, that'll be the next thing that we look at. Okay, guys, here's what I came up with. Uh, I was looking through my various stains that I had. And again, I mentioned I love the gel stains because you can apply them multiple times and get the uh, depth that you're looking for. So here's the uh, veneer. Um, same piece as this. And I had some nutmeg. And you can say, see that I laid the uh, nutmeg on there. And it's, uh, it's pretty close. Let me just lay it down this way. And you can kind of compare the two under the same uh, lighting conditions. So the advantage I have, I can wipe on this uh, gel stain on this area, this strip of veneer that I just placed. In addition to that, I can also apply a very light coat to the remaining part of the cabinet as well, just to create a better blend before applying the, uh, the toner lacquers. So uh, that's my game plan. So let me grab um, a paper towel here, shop towel, put a little gel stain on it, and let's hit this, uh, this veneer and uh, wipe it off, and we'll take a look at it together see what the uh, result looks like okay what the heck let's just do it uh, live and see what happens if I uh, make a big mass out of this You know, I was talking about getting through to the uh, paper, and I'm glad I didn't knock that uh, off anymore down here on this high side, because I think that's exactly what I did, but again, I'll be able to cover that up with uh, toner lacquers. I think this will give you some general idea of what I'm talking about as far as being able to blend the, uh, you know, the two pieces together. Now again, this veneer is not a, a perfect match to this other. The grain lines are a little bit different, but uh, I'll actually cut some grain lines in using my X-Acto knife uh, to closer mirror some of the uh, grain lines here. So it's not so apparent where we jump off from the uh, existing veneer back to the new veneer. But I think what's showing down here on this side is uh, some paper uh, where I probably uh, sand it through just to get to that high side off. But again, the uh, when I hit some toner lacquers, um, I'll be able to uh, cover that up. So no concerns there. Hit it one more time here. You know, if I don't like the result of this, I can sand it or I can go back and uh, grab my Wannet veneer, uh, which is this is Wannet veneer, and uh, make it just a little darker. Uh, there's no problems uh, matching, you know, the. Uh, the stains that way you can apply one over the other okay there you have it 
so not bad. And again, there you can see where the two veneers come together, but uh, my next step is, again, I'll probably create some grain lines in the existing veneer to match the old, um, but prior to doing that, let me get out some of my uh, wax sticks and let's play around with some of those on camera and see if we can't uh, feather out the, uh, the seam lines there where the two veneers come together. Okay, let's give this a try. Not sure how easy it's going to be to see this on camera, but maybe I can tilt it. Yeah, it looks pretty good there. But uh, what I'm going to use is some of these uh, fill sticks. And um, you can rub them right back off, but the uh, secret is to start with your lighter colors, then work towards your darkers. So um, let me just kind of rub some of these in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And I'll grab another one here, just a little bit darker, and just keep playing with these different colors. You can see here we're starting to uh, hide the uh, flaw. But that may be too dark, so um, let's go back with something with just a little bit more chocolate brown. do this on top too because I've got just a little bit of an edge there and by the way you can finish right over these now what I like to do is uh, rub it back in and then I'll go back over it again I'm just trying to right now just kind of play around with the uh, various colors the, uh, grab another one here go back to something just a little bit lighter Maybe this gives you the idea that what I'm looking for. Let's hit it with something just a little bit of red. And then I'm going to take that. To the uh, browns. Again, folks, all I'm doing is um, kind of going back and forth here, just trying to uh, create the uh, the right, you know, blending effect. So you can see, you know, where the two come together at this point. But, you know, again, I'm just showing this for demonstration uh, purposes. I'll wipe this back off and, uh, of course, I'm going to use uh, some grain filler on the radio as well. And then I'll go back and play around with this technique. Again, I just wanted to uh, kind of demonstrate what the uh, possibilities are here. So you can see they do a fairly good job of uh, covering up um, these flaws. Now you may say, well, I can't see the grain lines. And again, the grain in the old wood was not very defined, so I'm not overly concerned. But I can also cut grain lines in and hit it one more time with stain and kind of drag these two pieces together. Or I can take my uh, graining pins and create some false... Um, grain lines you know they're just painted on they look real but uh, tie it in 
but uh, that should give you some indication of uh, you know what's possible and how to match uh, the veneer. Uh, looks pretty good. Zoom in here just a little. Maybe that'll give you a better indication there what I was able to uh, do. Again, if you look real close, but again, this was just, uh, you know, what, two or three minutes here spending uh, doing that. I would spend more time here before, uh, you know, applying the uh, lacquer, toner lacquers to uh, get the desired uh, result. Hey folks, thanks for joining. I just wanted to, uh, again, spend a few minutes, and I know this video has been crazy long, but just show you what's possible with the veneer matching. Again, I probably only spent, what, two minutes or so messing around with the fill sticks. Applied a little bit of gel stain, but there's a lot of other options as well. I've got uh, some brush tip graining markers that we can use uh, to recreate the grain lines. Again, this particular uh, veneer, the grain lines are not uh, evident. Um, so, yeah, I think the fill sticks uh, probably will work best, but time will tell. I'll actually remove uh, the wax here in this area because I've still got to do the uh, filling of the uh, the pores of the grain. And I'm going to use a, a water-based product. So for those that are uh, interested in seeing that, I'll publish a video as well. But uh, over the next week or so, I'll see if I can duplicate my fine efforts uh, that I was able to do here for this piece, this piece, and then tackle this uh, top section up here as well. So again, I appreciate you uh, sticking with me. I know, again, it's been a long video and uh, hanging out for the uh, restoration on this uh, Shanti Clear 2D 570 cabinet back from the uh, early to mid-1930s.